Hey guys, and welcome back to our Java OpenGL game development tutorial series. Um, today I want to continue working on our graphics class, because we got a few more methods that we've got to get going in our graphics class before we can make it start drawing images. And the reason why I want to develop these methods first is because a lot of them will apply to everything you draw with this class, whether you're drawing just basic lines, or uh, rectangles, uh, or images themselves. There's going to be different things you can do to like rotate or change the color or the blending mode and things like that. And so we're going to try and get a few of those things done here uh, so we can get one step closer to drawing images using our OpenGL. What I'm going to do here uh, is I'm going to create a color changing method that lets us set the color. Because you see right here uh, in fill rect, we just set it to a basic white color by setting red, green, and blue uh, values to 1. These are normalized values, which means they're somewhere from 0 to 1. Uh, 0 means none of the color, so no, no red if I said 0 here, uh, and full red if I said 1. Okay, uh, So that's what a normalized value is. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some, I'm going to comment this real quick, color values. We're going to create five, uh, four color values. Private, static, float, red equals 1 by default. I'll just set them all to 1. Private static float green equals 1 private static float blue equals 1 and private static float alpha equals 1 alpha is transparency I'm sure you know that um, red green blue and alpha are all set to 1 and here in fill rect we're going to change this uh, to gl dot gl color 4f instead of 3f because we've got four values now red green blue and alpha in that order and that will easily just set our uh, color values uh, so if we were to run this now you'd notice no change because we're still drawing white so let's change something here let's change green to zero uh, and blue to 0.5 we should get a slightly purplish red is what we should get when we run this and that's exactly what we get. Oh, it kind of blends in because it's so close to red. So let me change that maybe to just blue. So red is 0, green is 0, blue is 1, and alpha is 1. And we should get uh, that. That's exactly what we get. So set them all to 1 for default. And now we're going to, to create a method that lets us set the color. I'm going to do that down here. It's just going to be a public static void set color. And as parameters, it's going to take four floats. R, G, B, and A. Self-explanatory, this is red, green, blue, and alpha. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say red equals R, green equals G, blue equals B, and alpha equals A. And this will sit now. Actually, what we should do is we should clamp the value to somewhere between zero and one, because if the user, because uh, if at any point we don't know what we're doing and we try to give it a value that's greater than, uh, greater than one or less than one, uh, zero, it's going to throw us an error when we try to set the color right here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, set a, um, we're going to create a, a quick method to clamp the value to between zero and one. So where we have red equals r, we're going to change that to red equals math.max of 0 and r. And we can do the same thing here, math.max 0 and g. Blue equals math.max 0 and b. And we set alpha to be math.max 0 and a. Okay, and this what this will do is it will basically make sure our values are no lower than zero, because it will return either zero or r, whichever one is higher. So if r is less than zero, it will return zero. If r is greater than zero, it will return r. Um, but the way we make it clamp the upper end also is we're going to replace the r, g, b, and a in each of these with the same thing but in reverse. Math dot min instead of max, one and r, and we've replaced the g with math dot min one and g we replace the b with math dot min one and b and we replace the a with math dot min 
1 and a. So this is a, uh, it might look a little confusing, probably not, too, probably not too bad, but basically this clamps the value to between 0 and 1 so we don't do anything stupid. Um, and so let's test out our set color method. We're going to go into the uh, event listener class where we call graphics.fillRect. And we're going to, before we fill the rect, we're going to say graphics.setColor. And we're going to give it some values. Let's say 0 red, full green, 0 blue, and full alpha. So that's 0, 1, 0, 1. So when we draw this, we should get a fully opaque green square. And that's exactly what we get. And to demonstrate how the powerful this is, or how much time this saves us, we can copy and paste those two lines again, except this time let's make it a fully blue, uh, a f yeah, fully blue, fully opaque square, except we'll draw it uh, somewhere else. Let's set that for two. So now we, you see what we've done there. When we render this, we should get two different colored rectangles or squares in this case. And so this is demonstrating why we're creating this graphics class. We re it saves us a lot of time because we can use these methods over and over to draw as many different colored rectangles as we want. And whenever we create images, it doesn't make this any more complicated. We just draw these, we just pass an image parameter and uh, the method that we're going to use for that is very similar to the method that we're using right now. And so that's why I'm creating this method first uh, to help you get acquainted with the way our graphics class is going to work. So thank you for watching this episode, and uh, I, if you have any questions about what we covered in this episode, please leave them in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, and I will see you in the next video.